All right. So, hello, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to welcome you to Interest and Feet Talk Radio broadcast. Today's broadcast is a special broadcast, and I'm really excited. I am. Can you hear me? All right. I'm really excited about today. Um, today, man, is a, a good day. Uh, just uh, just got off of work, and um, I'm excited about the, our guest that we have coming on. Her, her name is Dana Elf. Dana is a regional Regional Agency Director for Symmetry Financial Group. And I'm telling you, I want you to go and and get as many people as you possibly can. Tag them. Tell them to come on right now. Um, you're about to learn some, some very um, formative information that we need. This is not just about, listen, this is not just for the singles, this for, not for, the, for just for the married, but it's for the young. And you know, this is a, a time that we need to get knowledge. We need to get knowledge as well. Knowledge is powerful. So I'm asking you to, by all means, continue to, to just share and everything like that. So I'm really happy about uh, bringing Don, Dana on. I have to put out a, a couple of disclaimers. I'm, I'm, I'm part of, of Dana's um, um, business and everything, and I've gotten the opportunity to get to know her for for like a, for almost not quite a year yet. And I trust her. Um, uh, she is a believer, and uh, I like her energy and her style of teaching and everything like that. And I'm just so excited to have her today. And I'm glad that she said yes. You know, this is something that we have we, we have been trying to do for a while, and um, um, I'm just glad that she uh, decided to come on. I want to read her her quick bio. If you just give me a minute here, okay? But Dana is Dana does a lot. <laughs> yeah, she's a very busy person and everything. And again, I'm just really excited about her and her being with us. Okay, okay. Let's see, let's see what I got. Uh, okay, y'all just bear with me. When you get my age, I, you, I just need a little more patience. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dana, the other thing is, I gotta let you know that we I joke around a lot too. Okay, I know I don't talk with all the, on the, on the <laughs> I don't do much talking with you guys, but I do a lot of talking here. These guys make you talk, especially Maggie. You know, <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Okay, so again, um, she's with Symmetry and everything. Um, I do have her contact information on the on the flyer and everything, but I know that we're listening to the, the, some of this. I listen to will be listening to the regular broadcast. We are going to post it on the radio platform, and um, you'll be able to listen to that in the short. But before we get started, I, I see the magnet has disappeared. I want to go ahead and open up a short prayer and everything. But Dana, I just want to say thank you for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know why I feel like my mic is. Oh, I have I have several headsets. <laughs> I have a headset for working out, so I have to switch heads there. But anyway, um, I'm just really excited about you being here and I'm uh, just sharing with the listeners and everything. And for those that are listening overseas, you know, uh, this is more what Dana is going to be talking about, more based for the United States. But I want to encourage you before she comes on to go and um, uh, check what's, what's going on in your area and stuff like that. There may be something that you may need. You know, uh, financial literacy is for everybody. It's not just for those in the United States. So we think those in different countries, uh, like 130 different countries that are part of our listeners base. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to say that uh, Dana, what did they, I got a chance to talk to Dana earlier and she was like, well, she wants them to be able to ask questions. So feel free to ask questions. If you can't put it in the, in the Zoom chat, you can put it on Facebook messen- Facebook chat and we'll get the questions to her. Okay. So let's go in a quick prayer. Father God, we just want to come and thank you for today, a new day, a brand new day that we have never, ever seen before. We are grateful to be in the land of the living God. We are grateful, God, that all that you have done. You have brought us a mighty long way. When we look back over our life, God, it was truly no one but you. You did it, God. So here we stand, God. We want to be sought, light, and power to God, to the people that need you, God. We want to be a fresh, a fresh, 
we want to bring forth knowledge. We want to bring forth love and wisdom. We want to point those that don't know in a direction that they need to go, God. But it's not even about us, God, but it's all about you. You get all the glory. We thank you for Dana, God, and her team joining us, God. We pray, God, that you continue to bring forth her much success, God. We pray, God, not only for her, but for, for her whole household, God. Continue to pour your fresh anointing upon her. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. 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 So again, I'm 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 excited about everything. I'm glad to see some of my co-hosts with me. Uh, I guess the rest should be joining us first. We are broadcasting on Facebook Live, and if they will, we'll be monitoring that. And uh, once we put it again on the broadcast on the platform. For those that listen to the platform on our heart radio speaker, it's like about 17 or 18 different platforms that we broadcast. You can be, we're going to give you Dana's information now too, of course, so that you can be able to reach out to her and stuff like that. If you can't reach her, you can reach her. You can always reach me. All right. So Dana, again, I'm glad to have you. Good to see you. you know, thank you for everything that you're doing with me because it takes a lot of patience with me. So I'm grateful uh, for your time. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, Dana, I'm just going to, we already talk about Whatever direction you want to go, we can go. So I'm going to give everything over to you, okay? I appreciate it. And Ray, I, I enjoy getting to be in business with you and and to see where, you know, God puts people in our life and to know what networks happen just because of conversations. And when this came up in conversation, how many times people just, they need to know what they don't know. And I think a lot of times people are fearful to ask. They maybe feel like they would, um, I don't know, feel inadequate for not already knowing some answers or, you know, especially as people get further along, closer to retirement, maybe they kind of feel some sort of way of asking for help. Like, can, am I too late? How can I get prepared? And so it's it's that balance, you know, whether you're young and maybe you have heard financial principles and you want to be empowered how to use it or, you know, Hey, I want to understand retirement, especially while you're younger. And yeah, and you start to learn there are choices. And uh, I think, you know, especially here in the U S we tend to follow societal norms and uh, I'm not opposed to break the norms sometimes. (laughs) It's one of those that I was called to this for sure. I, uh, you know, be before getting into this insurance and and retirement solution lane, I you know I had worked with sales and restaurants and and nonprofit and in all honesty I wasn't looking for this so I didn't think, uh, but it was interesting when I left my past career and I learned what to do with retirement. Uh, it was this aha, I had lost money in the market. My 401k from the job before that had tanked. And I just knew I needed something to feel more secure in. And when I had learned what options I had with my 403b, which is a retirement form for nonprofit, I was like, wow, more people just need to know. I had no idea that the same insurance lane would bring me closer to how can I help people to know. So um, it, it's definitely been a it, it's been a blessing of abundance and people and just getting to pay that forward. So to have an opportunity like this is is great to be able to impart knowledge and answer questions. And I'm gonna, like Ray said, I want questions. I, I thrive on them because then I know I'm answering what all people may need to hear because um, there's so many different things that can make anything financial feel confusing. So I try to do my best to make it very user-friendly. I am a visual learner, so Ray, if it's all right by you, I also have slides that I'd I'd like to share. It kind of helps me to talk through and people to see, and it may very well spark a question you didn't even know that y'all have. So I welcome open, honest communication here and getting to share all aspects of just understanding what what are some options with investments? How do they work? Where are my options? Um You know, I I will tell you this to preface, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a tax accountant. Can I tell you insurance law? Can I tell you how inheritance and things work? 
one, through life experience, and two, through licensure. But I am not licensed to lose anyone's money. I don't play the stock market game, but I surely teach people how to grow money without on the market without financial risk. And I think, I mean, Ray, that, that kind of seems to be a common thing. Like, hey, right. if you can make money when the market's up, but when the market's down, not lose a dime, would you want to know about it? That's where I was when I left my last career. And I was like, there's a way when the market's up, I still earn. Retirement doesn't have to stop just because maybe I didn't have a 401k. So this works great for whether you are in a company that has 401s, uh, 403, 457, pick a number. Um, they have retirement options, but it also works. What if you're self-employed? What if you are a homemaker? Um you know, I think it's just important to know and understand that everyone has option as long as they know where to reach out and get financial solutions. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. All right. So I don't know if you had anything um, in addition or you want me to just jump right in and kind of explain a little bit of kind of where my thought was going that right. at least jumpstart some dialogue, maybe some questions people might want to throw in the chat. Um, right. I think even later, I think you have a platform where we can be able to offer where people can unmute, even if they're maybe more yeah. of a verbal instead yes. of typer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think one of the first things, so I'm not speaking Greek. Um, I would like to kind of share how finances from a higher level, how they work. Um, I, I always like to kind of share visually. Um, bear with me. I'm going to make sure. Oh, we need to give permissions maybe to my iPad for me to get to share. Okay. Um, let's see. Did you? Let me see if I have an option to do that. Mm-hmm. Get it? Okay. Um, you as the host would need to do that. Well, I, I am, but I don't see. Uh, you should be, Maggie. She should be able to do that without. If you make it co-host, I think I'm allowed to share it. That. Yeah, but but I thought I can't hear you, Maggie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. I muted myself. Okay, so if you made her co-host. She should be able to share. Right, but I <clears throat> I have a second, uh, my iPad. So go to the second iPad, the second one, and hit on those dots and make that one core. Co okay. Host. The three little dots, I just. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ray said it was going to be nice and casual. We get to lay back on this Zoom and have a good time. So um, let's see if I can. All right. <laughs> start all right technology isn't always my best friend finances okay. are but all <laughs> right let me get to where i get to share all right let me minimize i think you can see my screen yes no it started sharing give it just one moment i think I'm going to try one more time, and if that doesn't work, we'll just go with a video instead, our little walkthrough chart. Yeah, what, what Dana said up for that, I want to let those that are um, signing in know uh, the reason for this is because mm -hmm. we just want to give out information and knowledge, or, and um, we're dealing, dealing with financial literacy. Again, you listen to When Chris and Pete Talk Radio. This is Matter of the High Singles Ministry. We welcome any of those that are single, those that are married, grandparents, <laughs> uncles, whoever, to tune in, please share by all means. This is a very important uh, broadcast for today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It's saying yeah. I should be able to share. And if this doesn't work, I'll see if I have another one and skip to a different way to, oh, to visually show. I, it's doing that, but. Let's see if that's going to let me share. Do you see that now? No? No. Okay. Know. 
It doesn't want me to be able to share. Okay, no problem. So we'll go a different way. Um, so Ray, what if I, you, I wonder if you make her the host and make yourself the co-host, would I do it? Okay. And just switch it back before we all disconnect. Okay. All right. In other words, Dana, don't hang up on everybody. Right. <laughs> I think all my leaders will know how many times I say, okay, I'm going to make one of y'all a host. Don't hang up on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. More than we know. More than we know. Try it now, um, Dana. All right. Mm-mm. but it's see. you see it at the top so what you have to do is you have to um take it off because at the top of the video is not on there you go, there you go. oh did it That's just fine. do it for real and i told it to stop it sure did i told you technology is not always <laughs> Good things are worth waiting for. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right. You said you got it. You started to see it to work. It was. Try to go to Swiss and start video hit. There you go. There we go. It had to load. Okay. So <laughs> this is um, thankful to one of our, our, our carriers that we work with of the many, um, they have this really neat chart mm. that, like I said, I'm a visual learner. So I do like to go through and, and just kind of talk through how investments work. That way, from a, a broad stroke, people understand, um, you know, when you have different options of things such as your when we talked about retirement vehicles, like if you have a 401k or maybe you're in nonprofit or, you know, the teacher sector and you have 403b or law enforcement, 457. Like I said, you could pick a number. At the end of the day, it's about the retirement vehicle. Um, and so what I like to go through with people is, is where you have um, the concept of what's called a variable market. And variable obviously means when it goes up, it goes down. And that's what this red line indicates. This is an actual dissection of, and let me see if I can move my, move my little picture so I'm not exactly on top of the numbers. Okay, so the red in itself being where we've had, um, you know, this is one portfolio of the same 100,000, and it, it's a dissection of a 20-year look back. So it can show where we've had very well-known highs and lows in the stock market, right? So the red line here is the actual stock market. So if you had a 401k and you think about back in 2000, 98, 99, we had a dot-com bubble, right? Everything was big. Everything was, you know, everybody's retirements were looking great. Then all of a sudden where you had that same 100,000 had grown in a two-year span, we had what was called the dot-com burst, right? That's where all of a sudden in one year's time, we were right back where we started that we got to gain for a couple of years, but we weren't done hemorrhaging. It just kept going and that's where it kept dropping. So, you know, we've all heard when the market, you know, is down, people get nervous. That's when they want to take their money out. And you've always heard the, the recommendations, look, don't, don't, Get out now. Let it ride. It will come back. Be patient. Right. You, you've all heard that. And that's where exactly you can see where. OK, so in this portfolio live cut where we had, you know, one, two, three, four, five years to finally get above where we were that we had lost in two years. Make sense. So, yeah, it can return. Absolutely. One of the factors about the stock market is the fact it's very cyclical, right? I mean, you can look at the U.S. economy and you have things like a bear market reset and where you have things happening. If you think back to 07, here we were, we had earned that money back. Anybody remember what was going on in 08, 09? 
the housing crisis, right? So if you look, we had the same problem. We had a huge downfall and it wasn't done. And this one took a little bit longer. This was definitely that recession side of things to where it takes a little longer to get that money back. But where you look at, you know, okay, one, two, three, here we were, we were here finally above where we were, but it kept on going. Not a bad shot that now we're finally looking really good. Now, if I were to look at this current, I mean, COVID comes along, you know, you, again, we have the cycle, you have where economists like the, the feds, they want to hold back recession. So they kept the interest rates really, really low. People took up in great storms of, of being able to get low interest mortgages and, and to take up, never mind all the other costs that were on that rise. And then COVID comes along. That completely between already needing to have a correction in the market and then you throw at it, the world turned upside down in, in 20, 2021, 2022 is still, when you look at this has been that recession, we are in one, it's, it's really been that huge downside to where it's one of those major market hits. So that is what happens in variable is that, yes, it can go up when the market's up, but it can also come down when the market has its issues. Now, a lot of things also changed after 2000, what, eight, nine, anybody pick up their little seven ounce brick these days? <laughs> we have a whole lot more technology in the palm of our hand, but that's where you have more evolution of all of the social media well, that made where our economy is already emotional, that much more emotional. Think about it. It could take a simple little tweet. All of a sudden, everybody's all skittish about their money and what they do. And so where you almost kind of used to look at things from that annual platform, it is very much during the day what's happening. And, um, you know, it can change on a dime and it can make people nervous. And and so other vehicles and having awareness are where people just want to know, what if I don't want all my eggs in one basket? And that's why we just like to share with people, what are some of the other baskets? Oh, makes sense. Any questions on variable and, and just kind of, again, I'm not an advisor, so I'm not going to speak to any more in depth on that. But the concepts, absolutely, just to make sure they make sense with everyone. Yeah. All right. It, so, I'm sorry? No, I was going to ask the group any questions so far, guys? No. Okay. I, I just didn't I recognize what does the green um, graph represent? That is great. Somebody's already recognizing there's something else. That's what I'm going to go over with you. That's great. Well, let me, in between, I'm going to get rid of my highlight so it doesn't cloud the screen. So in the, in the blue, just so you know, that's, that's something when you have fixed. A lot of people out of the nervousness, they will tend to go with the uh, interest bearing accounts. Let's face it, savings accounts, checking accounts don't even give us like they used to, right? Um, but maybe CDs, things that, hey, we'll guarantee, or if they have a fixed interest, anything then that's that blue, slow and steady. If you're military, so many of my military, when they got nervous, they wanted to lower their risk, that's where they would take the G fund. Well, that's not even the blue line, but it is the concept. It won't lose, it'll be slow and steady. So like you asked, let me talk about that green line. This is where my specialty is. Because I just like to share with people what's called fixed indexing. Fixed indexing is the green line. What that does is, like I said earlier, when the market's up, you get to get money. So let's take this same $100,000 start. The market's up. We get to earn money. When the market's down, the in money is insured to not lose a dime. So if you look, even the gains and the original 100,000, what's called principal, is secured. So here we are. The market was down on the red, but we're just going to stay flat. So even back in 2002, 
Yes, you're going to have a climb when the market goes up. But do you want to start from the 125000 or start back at the 78000 Well, it kind of says, all right, I'd like to protect money, but I still want to earn money. And there's factors that come into play with finding that that right fit for people because it does need to go into, you know, but this is a lot of times this is dealt with in annuities, what's called fixed indexing for fixed indexed annuities. There's also other in life insurances like universal life being fixed index for an index universal instead of having a variable universal. So at least you understand when I talk about an index, this is where your money, you're giving your money over to the insurance company. They're going to go invest it. So now they become your brokers in essence. You are only now participating in the market. By participating, they say, when the market's up, we give you money. When the market's down, sorry, we don't have any to give you. But you don't lose anything out of your bucket. That is what the green line is. So when you look at a red, a green, a blue, which line seems the most appealing for us to talk about tonight? The green. The green. It does perform really well when you get to start at higher levels and keep on climbing. Um, good. Any any questions before I pivot into ways that we can talk about insuring money and opportunities with that and what that looks like? Any questions on the red, the green, the blue? Anything maybe in your chat or your Facebook questions coming in yet, Ray? No, not so far. Okay. I don't know. What about Facebook? Nothing on Facebook yet. Okay. So the good Robert, thing is... Robert, did you have a question? Because I saw you on mute and then you muted again. No, I was going to say, I think in elementary school, there was a book called Green Me Go. So, <laughs> there you go. go. Uh, red light. Red light, green light. I used to love that that, uh, yard game. That's great. So I'm going to stop sharing this um, because I think, like I said, I I wanted to make sure I'm not speaking Greek as I get into some other vehicles and ways to leverage. What if you do have the blue? What if you do have the green? Um, And and everything I'm going to go over coming up next is working on one of the things that our firm loves to do is just That's what we do. We educate people. Not here to sell you anything. We're here to educate you of one, you don't know what you don't know. But here's a couple questions is most of the time when I speak with people and I ask them, you know, are you 100% sure you can have a great retirement? How many people really feel like they can say yes to that? Not many. They always question it, right? Did I save enough? What if the market loses again? What, you know, what do I do with this money? And then life happens with loved ones around us. Okay. Now I have this inheritance, but how long would that last? Or, Hey, now I got to put mama in, in home. Like I got, I need to take care of her or stay home. Work changes. Life happens as it evolves, right? So it can always make retirement feel iffy. Well, then there's the other side. Well, Okay, do you feel as though debts keep you from saving enough for retirement? Well, that's a pretty, a lot of people say yes, because I mean, let's face it, we're under the thumb of debt. And it's, it's one of those, if I could show you how to pay off your debt, not, you know, even your mortgages, typically nine years or less, but you're using the money you already spend. And that's an important thing. I'm going to repeat it because I always learn if you repeat it, it's that important. What if you could learn to pay off your debt using the money you already spent? Typically, nine years or less. Would you want to know about it? Absolutely. What does retirement look like when you don't have that mortgage? Or maybe you're, you're, you know, about to have a first baby. You're like, holy cow, kids are expensive. I think they cost more than the house. I love mine, um, but they're not cheap. How do we prepare for life? And I just think it's important that we know future debts are going to happen if you don't even have debt. You may be really good at managing your finances. And there's some great financial principles that this is already going to help you pick up and giddy up and go. You may not know financial principles and you want to know 
how can I participate in that? So I'm going to share one of our concepts, um, which is called debt-free life that I just referred to. What if you could learn to pay off your debt? So I do have a visual for that too, because I'm, a, again, a visual learner. Um, let me switch to where I get to share my screen. This time I'm on computer, so it shouldn't mess up for me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move my little Zoom controls. All right. Now, this one, I can't see what's what. So, you can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Yeah. This is what I like to go through with my clients, just understanding financial principles. So, I'm going to do that with you all this evening as well. Fair enough. So what we like to go through when I talked about debt-free life, paying off your debts, learning how to have financial principles, be more comfortable with the knowledge of them. I think what's most important, first of all, is if I go over what this is not, because I already know what kind of things y'all are thinking. Right. So right. first of all, this isn't consolidating your debt. All right. This is not some get rich quick scheme. Can you make money with your money? Yes. I'm not here to worry about making you a millionaire, and I don't think God matters about that either. But could it make it easier for you to be able to tie that church? Could it make it easier for you to be able to run your day-to-day -day finances? Absolutely. And to me, that's the richness when you can be able to give even more back. So... It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not some multi-level marketing. Like I said, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to educate you on what are the options. How does this work, right? So, again, in the efforts of making sure that I explain things so I'm not speaking above anyone's knowledge base, let me go to some of the basics of financial principles. One of the first things, debt snowball. Anybody heard of this? Yes. So debt snowball, if you look, you know, hey, we get we get a paycheck. We take that. We're going to disperse it. We've got bills. We're going to pay that. Here's one of the ways before I go through kind of how it works. Let me ask human nature in spending. Anybody that has a credit card, you get that bill. Let's say Visa sends the bill and they say your minimum payment is $25. Now, my question always of people is, look, do you, do you throw a little extra at it to pay it off earlier? Most people say yes. That's human nature, right? Well, some people take that extra, you know, even if it's a, I round up the car payment from, you know, that extra little bit, or I pay, you know, $100 instead of that $25. It's when you're trying to get out of debt and you do with what you can right? You have that same $100 budget based on what you see on the screen. So when you can disperse that of what am I going to pay, when you have a debt snowball focus, it's where you take the smallest little bill. And if you know, hey, I'm paying Chase, you know, $20 a month. <clears throat> Once I pay that small bill off, I'm going to move that same $20 to now add to what I'm paying over at Citibank. In this example, that is what's called snowball. When I pay off Citibank, now I'm going to add what I was paying Chase and Citibank. I'm going to add that up to the Chase Freedom because that's the next largest. So does that make sense? What and how debt snowball works? It's one payment. It's one payment. It's yeah. one payment. It's one payment. Hello. I heard something. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Okay, so here's another way to put it. I, um, I'm sure many of your churches, I know mine participates and has participated in financial peace. So if you have Don Dave Ramsey's approach, you have your envelopes and you allocate. This is what I'm paying. And let's say the envelopes now are labeled with each of these debts. When I finish one, I'm going to move that payment to the next envelope. Now that takes your discipline right? Because you, you don't stop with paying the same budget you started with. You just have to remain disciplined and not say, woohoo, I, I paid off the car. Let's just go in and blow a whole nother chunk of money. It's that discipline of, all right, I pay one thing off. I'm going to move it to the next envelope, right? Here's a question I leave you with that I am going to address. If you, one, have either tried that, 
and it has not worked because it's really hard to be disciplined, especially when you're feeling a little broke. Something can happen in life and you need to take out of that envelope for something else. Life does happen, right? Um, the other side of that is this is the side that most people don't think about. When you are being disciplined or you're using the envelopes or you are snowballing to get debts paid off faster, this is a financial principle. The question is, when you put the money either in the envelope or you give the extra money now to Citibank and then to Chase and then to MasterCard, how much money did you make when you did that? How much money did that envelope pay you? I think the fact that I hear nothing means nothing. Okay, that's great. Yes, the envelope didn't pay you. Nothing. Nothing. And, you know, it's, it's it's my way of getting to say, if I didn't get to hear anything, I get to say, well, that's the problem. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All right, so everybody's understanding debt snowball, paying it off in order, using self-discipline, and, and just knowing that if you just stick with it, you're going to pay off your debt. However, what if I could show you a way that, I don't know, Stop cutting yourself out. Why don't you earn money? So here's the next concept. Avalanche. Some of us look at things like, okay, we got that introductory credit rate of 0%. Hot diggity dog. Anybody ever looked at, I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to even name drop, but we'll just say, okay, I'm getting kitchen cabinets at Lowe's. And they say, we'll give you 0%. We'll send the guy in to measure it. We're going to get them delivered next Monday. And you're like, great. I have three years to get these kitchen cabinets paid off. 0%. This is like using their money to get my beautiful kitchen. And that's just a very real example I see more and more, but it's the concept. If you look at the way that you now get your statement, and nobody really pays too much attention <laughs> to what is the interest rate if you don't pay it off by that, let's say, three years from now, November of 2025, we haven't paid it off, what's the interest rate? Some people have. And so they will look at, all right, if the quicker I get the biggest interest rate, they look at, oh my gosh, that that department store credit cards running me 27% or Home Depot or, you know, whichever, or, hey, I'm really lucky. I got this 7% interest credit card. They look at going for the highest interest card and do the same thing as Snowball. Let's get that interest out of my hair. Now I've got more money that's about principal, right? The main amount you owe. And I'm going to pay that up to Chase. I'm going to get extra payments made. How many people have heard, let's look at the last debt that's listed on this page, mortgage. Well, we've, we've heard if I make an extra mortgage payment a year, I can shave time off my mortgage. Yes, you can. Seven years. Okay. If you're that disciplined and you set it up that structured. Avalanche is about getting interest out of the way, but it is a financial principle. Now let's look at them side by side. Because this is really where it shows that concept of, is there really a difference? I'm snowballing in both. And it's like, yes, there is. The difference is, what do you focus on? So look at them side by side. The same $100 that's split out of who am I going to pay? But the very first on the debt snowball is Chase. And then we got the debt avalanche. We're going to take care of the entry, high interest MasterCard. So it does change the order of the exact same bills. And it, it's what is really awesome about it is that where we have a proprietary software that really helps take any guesswork out of it, it does the math, it lets you know, how do you blend this? How do you use money to actually just look how to make it the most efficient, right? But here's the part I told you I was going to address. Anybody ever heard of infinite banking? Infinite banking is where you're the bank, right? So remember earlier I said, I want to address the fact, how much did the envelope pay you back? Nothing. How much did the mortgage company, when you made an extra mortgage payment every year, did it give you money back? No. And in fact, if you give your money and then you turn around, oh my gosh, now we got to get a new roof. What happens if you go back and say, oh, I was just kidding. I, I, I need that $1,000 back. 
okay, sure, you can borrow your money. This is the interest rate of which you're going to pay. So wait a minute, I've got to pay more interest to borrow my own money. That's exactly what happens. And so in essence, giving our money to try to pay things off early doesn't necessarily feel that great. And that's usually because we leave ourselves out of it. Infinite banking is where, like I said, where are you in this? What if you can make the money bypass the bank and pay yourself? Why give them the extra money when the extra money you're giving them, I can guarantee for you that extra money, the money you're already spending, grows bigger, faster, snowballs inside your own vehicle to be able to pay your bills off faster than even if you threw extra money, an extra mortgage payment. It, it does, it, it makes it so refined and yet infinite banking is a con, it's a concept that's been around for generations. In fact, think about Disney, you know, he took a loan from his own life insurance because he was rejected for loans. And this is during the Great Depression. Ray Kroc wanted to be able to take his McDonald's and turn it into franchise. Okay, let's leverage insurance because that's where they could do it. Pampered Chef, uh, you know, having, you know, Dorothy Ray, having, um, shoot, Warren Buffett is very much into imminent banking. I, I do think that you might know a thing or two about finances. So if all of these greats have made great empires out of just creating infinite banking and leveraging insurance, why wouldn't we want to know about it? And that's what we try to do to show people how you can take one of the strongest vehicles of investment and use it to your advantage and teach you how does that work. So let's talk about that mortgage so that way, it's not just mortgage, but it's understanding amortization. So that way you understand why I'm so passionate about this and why, even if you're like, no, I've always heard, don't pay off the debts. You need a little bit. It builds your credit. Oh, I've always heard, don't pay off the home. You need it for your write-offs. If that's what you're thinking, I'm talking to you, okay? If you're like, I'm never going to retire because I have at the very least this house and I got kids going through college and I have student loans and I have the end list does grow, especially if you're younger, it's going to grow. The future debts happen or it's a, I, I've had people usually joke, I think I'm going to work until I'm six feet under. <laughs> what if I could change that for you just by learning what you don't know? And this is what is probably one of the most crucial parts is understanding the amortization schedule. The amortization table is, it's a truth in lending. Every time you've borrowed money, but, and let's face it, when you use a credit card, you're borrowing. When you took a mortgage, you're borrowing. When you have a student loan, you're borrowing. At the end of the day, your amortization table is to saying, you have this monthly payment. This is the portion that will go to the principal of the loan, the main amount you borrow, right? Now, the rest of that payment is going to interest. But here's the thing that people don't usually put two and two together. How many people were excited? Remember, I talked about that, that the housing and, and the, you know, the low interest and how many people grabbed a low interest loan while you could. You see interest rates on the rise again. But how many people are like, whew, okay, I caught it while it's still at a 3.25. Here's what I need you to understand is that you may have your monthly payment, but if you look, and this is just a one year of payment, okay? And when you look at the same monthly payment is going for paying this $345,000 house, look at the computed interest, See, on the very first payment, February 1st, 2019, $1,080.92 of the $1,610 payment is going to interest. If you actually did the math of the principal, $530.72 out of the total payment, <laughs> do you realize it's definitely not that 3.25%? And most people don't realize how much they pay in interest. And this is showing you it's compound interest. So the 
first thing is to understand, do you know when you actually do get to pay only 3.25% to the interest of your payment? The very last year of the loan. So there's 29 years of a 30-year mortgage that the bank is to make money on your money. Make sense? Yes. So here's the part of, well, why does it work that way? No, I make an extra payment. I decided to, to pay biweekly, so I get that extra mortgage payment. There are so many tricks to the financial game, right? But here's the thing. If you owe $1,000, so we'll do it for the sake of math. If you owe $1,000 and you decide I'm going to pay, you know, or I'm going to pay uh, fifteen hundred. Like if you're monthly, if you're paying a thousand dollars as a monthly payment, let's say you owe ten thousand dollars. So we're gonna pay a thousand dollars because I, you know what, I'm gonna chunk this quicker. Well, what happens is when you throw extra, let's say that extra payment, it's gonna take the grand amount you owe minus the extra that you paid in. That's great, but now the next month, all it's gonna do is okay. So we have nine thousand left over. Even though maybe you only owed five hundred, but you threw a thousand of nine thousand, let's take the same three point two five percent interest, or if it's a credit card, twenty six point nine nine percent, or whatever. We're going to add that back. So if you had a twenty five percent interest, let's pick a credit card. A quarter of the extra payment you gave them, you just lost, hmm. and that's the downside of the compound interest aspect. So compound is where it's going to compound based off of the total that you owe. And that's typically monthly or however your pay cycle may be. Does that make sense when I talk about interest gets compounded back on? And so you really don't get the full value of the dollar, even though you've paid extra money. Does that help? Does that make sense? So how do we yes. how do we fix that? How do we fix it? This is where we like to show people what happens if you can one make yourself your own banker and give the extra principal money you want to pay, pay it to yourself. Give yourself the vehicle that can do it that's going to be able to earn compound interest. Oh, not a bad thing. It's an annual compound interest. And it's guaranteed, but contract? No way. Yes, it's guaranteed. So now we're going to get to earn money on the market because we're going to give money over. It's going to go earn money and we're going to enhance. So when we want to use our money and you want to take a loan, who are you going to borrow from? Yourself. Who is it? And when you have simple interest an annual simple interest that means one time it's charged and yet you're paying the interest to borrow from yourself so when you pay it back guess who gets the interest back <laughs> you again it's all about how do we make you the banker that is what the overall debt-free life concept is is let us teach people one, how do we turn around and show you where are you saving? What are your habits? Where are you investing? What are your options? And just have a conversation because you'd be amazed. A lot of people don't even know what and where and how they're spending money. Or they don't understand why, no matter what they do, why am I not getting ahead? So that's that's kind of a big part of what we do on that. So I'm going to pause a moment because I know it feels like a fire hose right now, doesn't it? <laughs> but I hope I've kept it at least simplistic enough. Right. But I do want to pause. I want to see, are there any questions or, or I don't know, maybe I need to have a little fun and quiz them, Ray. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see what you caught on to. <laughs> well, I like the, I like the idea of, um, Okay, that's got another alert. I, I like the idea of the uh, being your own bank, you know, of getting to a point where you 
don't have to use the regular banks or whatever, and you save on that interest and everything. And so you just, I like that idea. And um, again, the idea behind what we're doing today is to is to bring forth education. You know, mm-hmm. just because uh, the scripture says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge, and uh, it's time that we uh, gain the knowledge. You know. It says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But if the just don't have the knowledge, then <laughs> to get that was already laid up, then it's like, okay, then now what, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. I just feel like that is time. I, for me, don't laugh, Robert. <laughs> I just, for me personally, um, I know that as many as these guys know that I had a stroke some time back and everything like that. And I sort of, I can't go back in the past and we uh, redo anything, but I wish I had the information I have now back then. And the, and the plan is to as many people that can uh, pass this information to, or we can pass this information. It's not just me. That's what we do. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it would have probably saved a lot of headaches, um, issues and troubles and problems and stuff like that if I had the information now. But now that I have it, what I'm going to do with it is the, is the key. You know, what do we do? It's not meant for us, you know, but it's always meant for someone else, you know. you know, It's we, an opportunity to, get to pay opportunity, that forward, isn't it? Right, yeah. And we can reap the benefits from it now and stuff like that, but it's always for someone else. And that's basically what we wanted to do. And again, this is for those that listen, we'll be listening for on the radio broadcast. This is not just about uh, being single or, or being married, but this is all of us, you know. This is all of us. Knowledge is power, you know, wherever you may be, whoever you may be and stuff like that. So um, feel free to reach out to Dana. Um, we do have information on the flyer, but Dana, we would like at this point, if you don't mind, to go ahead and give me information um, how we can get in contact with you, if, if, you, if you don't mind. I'd love to, but I do want to see if uh, Robert has his hand raised. Oh, he does. And I, I want to see what question, because I said I'm an open book. So what kind of question do you have, sir? So, um, I've lost money in the past, and currently a lot of celebrities and people have lost money with this, what is it, FTX collapse. So my question basically is, who do we follow? Do we follow what the investors in the stock market are doing, or do we follow what the banks are doing with money? Who, who, as a rule of thumb, what's the smartest group of people or entity to follow as a, in terms of how we manage or how we invest our money? Well, I think the first thing that I would lead off with is you had said where the banks are putting money. Do you know where banks have about 70% of their money? I would say life insurance. Absolutely, my friend. Bank on life insurance. Life insurance is the strongest vehicle and it is and and that's why they're leveraging it. That's why, you know, even back in the housing crisis, they they would offer insurance and we thought it was mortgage protection, but then all of a sudden something changed and, you know, but the money went to the banks. It didn't go to the families. And so mortgage protection is a type of how do we leverage insurance that was taken out of the banks for transparency. So where agents can introduce, hey, in the event of death or disability, here's this insurance. Now, the vehicle, the insurance needing to be financially strong is imperative. And I know our firm only works with A-rated carriers. That means they have been vetted out in multiple tests financially that they will be there to pay the bill. They will be there. You know, some of the annuity companies I work with, everybody could die tomorrow. And they are still positive in their portfolio. They have the money. So when you have that kind of financial strength, I think what my belief is you go with the security, you go with the growth, and you go with the right company. And and to know that when you have differences, when you have brokers, they have access to a lot of difference. So it's not about throwing a product at you. It's about fitting a product with you. So there is a difference and we all have our expertises, right? You don't go to the dentist to go fix the car. You don't go to the car to figure out why you got a toothache either. And so I think that's a very important factor to understand. 
the first thing is you've got to step back and whomever you're working with better ask one very important question. What do you want this to do? Because who should matter most out of all of this? We work hard for the money we have. There's a lot at risk for the ones we work for, the loved ones we have. And we know our date of birth. It is God's time when we go home. And to me, we don't know. I I didn't know May 27, 2020, that at 6 p.m. when I said, hey, I'll see you shortly, that I would lose my husband in a car accident two hours later. Hmm. I didn't know that. But I can tell you this very debt-free life insurance program we set up for financial strength is also the very thing that they were the first ones to help pay the insurance bill and my bank is still going strong it left me with financial security because I still have a daughter to raise as a single mom now and to know that God gave me that strength he gave me this know-how to get to bring me to this years before I lost John but to know our insurance would have been upside down and inside out when I would not have been in a position to feel like when you've got so much other stuff to grieve, why should you have to worry about finances? So I think what's important is what's important to you because I need to know if I can't work, if there's, you know, Ray, thank you for being vulnerable to share. You had a stroke. If something happened that you couldn't go to work and to know that the money is there that you can use to pay the bills, you you recover quite well, but many of the people, I came from American Heart. I worked with many heart and stroke survivors. How many of them had to turn around and now have home care, had to put in a handicap ramp, change their whole bathroom? That takes money. It takes a loved one out of work. And yet life insurance, people think, is just for when you're dead. And that is not the case. When it builds in security for anything that can change and to know that financially we work hard for the families we have or the toys you want, whatever it is you're working for. At the end of the day, why not be able to let your money become more fruitful so you can do more in this world (laughs) while you're here? But at the very least, you leave behind a legacy when we're called home. It's a win-win. You win if you live, you win if you die. So I, that is a long way of answering your question, but that is a very passionate answer I have because I've lived it. I've been on the edu- the educator side. I've, I'm here on the widow side. I'm he- I, I, it, I just can't explain enough that people think it's just for something they may never see. And you just, I, I'm here to differ. <laughs> That's not the case. It's for anything. It's your journey in life. So banks put their money in that too. They need to know exactly. It is computed to the penny. When we work these programs, you know, Mr. Warren, I I can tell you that when we work these programs, I can tell you because it's so well computated, what month you would have enough money in your infinite bank to be able to borrow and go pay off the car. To borrow, go pay off the Lowe's kitchen cabinets. To borrow... And, and you, it, that's where you learn how to leverage the money you're already spending. We just work with you on learning and finding where it's inefficient. And then why wouldn't you leverage what every other business tycoon has already figured out? If Wells Fargo's got 70% of their money in life insurance, why shouldn't I? Because I'm having to pay them interest to take a loan. Why not get to um, earn interest on, on my money instead? I hope that helps. Uh, I I have a question. Um, A few years ago, some friends of mine told me something about Bitcoin. I didn't know what that was, but they advised me to um, invest in it and that it's going to be so wonderful and great and do wonderful things. Well, I'm very cautious about my my money. I don't even do online banking because I just, I don't trust it. My sons have been telling me, mommy, do it is safe i i don't i don't trust it but i did the bitcoin i just invested a little bit of money i've seen it go up down up down the highest i've seen it gone was to double the money that i put in and after that it's just it's it's really a waste of time as far as i'm concerned so i was i was just looking at it and i said you know what let me just pull out of this but then i see also this is in my cash app 
they have investments. So I decided I was going to see if it was something in there I'd like to invest. And I saw something. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to invest in this. As I continued going through each stage, you know, each stage that it instructs you to go to, Mm -hmm. when I got to a certain part, it was, (coughs) excuse me, it was confusing to me. I didn't know exactly what it was talking about. And so I said, you know what? Let me just pull completely out of this. But I was just thinking to myself, I really want to get rid of Bitcoin because as far as I'm concerned, it's doing me, it's just a waste of time. <clears throat> I wanted to get your opinion on, is, is Bitcoin worth anything? Should I just let it stay there and let it do what it does or just to take my money out well you know what i think is funny hope is that i you know i myself was like okay well if why not let me go dabble let me go play i'll throw this money or i have other different investments and things and it's funny I, like you when something seems to want well, i mean i i find myself watching all kinds of youtube trying to learn it more i follow certain things and i'm like is this taking more time than i'm even earning so it's funny that you say that because that's exactly how i felt before whether to take it move it pull it that is really you know those are things that aren't my expertise i do know that it's what we call accessible um liquidity is a very big factor in most anything you look at and comfort to know is there a resource to get to learn to know to do what I do know about what I can talk with on what we do specialize in in the different vehicles, whether it's, you know, annuities and different types or different, you know, life insurances or disability or critical illness or whatever your needs are, is when there's investment vehicles within insurance, I love the fact that there is always the support. It takes the guesswork out. And when it's contractual and guaranteed, I feel less risk. So I think part of it is always going to be an individual. How risk adverse are you? Um, And how open to learning new things are we all too? You know, there's nothing wrong with playing if we have time. I I think it's kind of like where I've always been told if you ever walk in a casino, Don't put any money down. You're not willing to lose. And when you double your money, take the original and put it away. (laughs) It's, it's, that's just how I was taught. If I'm going to play, make sure it's money that you have to play with. Um, It is concerning. I've heard of and seen people shift all their retirements over to that. And it just feels too finicky, but it's not my place to give detailed advice on that particular but I know I've had a lot of my clients pull from their Bitcoin to put it exactly into this to grow back the money that they lost and to know that they do always have that partner to to work with them as their money is growing now what now what what's next you know and I tell a lot of people a lot of people have a guy you know they have that financial advisor and their world is that variable red line that I showed you guys and I and and I always say look you you have your guy you should have your girl too and the litmus test is are they willing are they working together for your interest because what I do is I help grow you save you money well great you got more money to work with your guy on then that you're not going to feel as risk averse about are you but that to me is a litmus test will their person get on the phone with me and always step back to say what does this client need these are the options and how they work together for your greater good so i guess hope to answer that where are your different whether it's your cash app you know where you see hey we got this investment is it working with your other concepts or does it feel like it's over on a little solo cloud that might be part of that litmus test it definitely feels like it's a solo cloud but um the um insurance that's interesting and um it's so funny my bank has really been um, reaching out to me i i really haven't had time to speak to them but i'm definitely going to make time to speak with them now 
Well, and I'm hoping even, you know, I'm, I'm going to share my, my link. I mean, I think everybody's portfolio ideas, questions are different. It's one thing we can be here on the Zoom and I can answer what the concepts and I can even, I can open up one and I'll open up my own. I don't care. I can and do a deep dive, but it, it's never going to resonate until it's your numbers. Mm -hmm. Because your plans, your what do you want it to do are going to be different. So I would encourage, yes, schedule with me too. Let's let's deep dive in it. What are the options that you have? Um, You know, we don't charge for any of our services, by the way. We literally, the insurance carriers pay us to show you what you can do. If you like it, great. That's where I'll go ahead and help you get it. So Mm -hmm. you get free, free consultation out of that, which is great. My condolences. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. It's it's getting, God's kept me strong. My daughter's made me stronger. My whole community and faith community, it's, you know, and the people I work with to know that when you, everything's got a purpose. And I, I think that um, this is exactly where I needed to be. You know, I was, I was unemployed and on my knees when this came about 2016 for me to take this leap of faith to go into this financial world. Um, And to know that it was for a purpose. And then I know that John's life being taken way too early is for a purpose. And mine here, how can I live the best days every day when I put two feet on the floor? So I appreciate it. It's kept me strong. Any um, other questions that are there or anything popping in on your other feeds? Um, No. Okay. Um, One of the things that I put on the flyer is, and what is, one of the things I learned from you, actually, or being with Symmetry, is what's your why? <laughs> okay, can you talk to us about that, please? Well, I think in different things I have, um, I have shared, the journey has evolved my why. Um, you know, sometimes when we don't understand God's plan in the moment, right? We question it. We, we sometimes even get mad because <laughs> we just don't get it. And, you know, when, you know, we, we talk about why you want to do this, why, why do we want to educate others? Or, um, I, I think that's where you're asking of why to work with others and why, you know, for me, it started with, I was so excited to learn something new. I felt like, um, that, how do I put this? A lot of times you feel like insurance agents tend to have kind of a negative stigma, right? Like, let's face it, like none of us laid around at night when we were kids just dreaming, I can't wait to sell insurance, all right? (laughs) But we always had that that prayer, that dream, that thought, I want to own a business. I want to help people. What is my call and what ways can I enlighten? And When, you know, I may not be great at figuring out how to get my iPad to share because technology is not my game, but finances are. When I had that light bulb aha moment, learning about fixed indexing, the very first screen that I put up with y'all, right? And I think that that's why I'm so passionate to show it in every presentation because that was the light bulb that went off for me. And so, Ray, I, I actually have a point with that is that sometimes our why we do the things we do start with our comfort level. And because I felt like giddy that I found a way to protect my retirement and I was comfortable when, I mean, I'm, I'm always a math person. This was a way I could take what I felt was a skill set, but I didn't know how do I do that? How do I work with other people? I I had no idea it was in insurance. So if you even like or fathom the concepts of teaching people this, go get your life insurance license. We'll even help you how to do it. (laughs) Um, And that's what we do. We have a bunch of independent brokers. So when this came about and why I would do this, it started with I wanted to teach people what I had learned. And in the midst of, of whatnot, I didn't realize until I learned more and more about insurance just to get my license. I was like, wow, I always thought life insurance is for when you're, when you're gone. And it made me think of situations that insurance had been there to make a difference. I know that when my dad, you know, my stepdad had passed, it was a 14 month probate. 
from my mom. She lived in the country, uh, you know, up in the northern neck. And so that being hours away, the closest hospital, 45 minutes away, she wanted to move here closer to the grandkids. And, and at this point, there wasn't that choice. She had to get through chaos. And so, Ray, that's when I think my eyes were open when I connected the dots that insurance isn't just some product. It's what does it do? So not only was it finances I could teach people about, I could help people learn, one, what is probate like? How do you avoid it? How do you have the money and the security to make the difference? And, you know, I don't like having to do the pass the hat at church and the GoFundMes. And the more I saw people having to do that, I can change that. So my why was to get people less afraid of insurance more aware of what does it do more aware that it it's not just for when you're gone because a lot of people you will insure your cell phone you will insure i will insure this ipad i insure my home i insure my car but why won't you insure your life i don't care if you're married or not so because i know this is like a single show Mm -hmm. somebody is there to clean up your mess when that time happens So it's either your mama that's so proud that you bought your first house. Do you want her last memory to be that you weren't responsible enough to get an insurance to just simply cover the bill? Or do you want her to say, by golly, look at how responsible my boy was. There's a difference in that dialogue, right? Or the woulda, coulda, shoulda. How many people never expect to lose their child? We do not insure our children because we think they're going to go. We insure them because we want them to have a legacy. I get to create a financial peace for my child. But God forbid, if something happens, it's God's time. It costs just as much financially to bury a child as it did to bury my husband. But yet the same vehicle, I taught you the green line, right? The same vehicle in a life insurance product. I pay a small amount a month for 30 years. That's it. Just like a term policy would normally be except the way this universal grows with guaranteed and index growth. Um, My child will have almost a million dollars to retire on. How many people might be um, kind of figuring, realizing social security might not be here for us. I certainly don't think it's going to be here for my child. I wanted to leverage insurance law, guarantees, financial principles, But at the end of the day, all that ties into my why is because the more knowledge you get, the more it is, it's my duty to teach other people. And if I come off some sort of way, I'm sorry, I'm jaded. I want to show you a tax-free retirement because I'm sorry, Uncle Sam, you get enough of my taxes. I'm going to teach you how to have a tax-free retirement. Why wouldn't you want to know about it? Why do people feel like they got to go into business on a 401 that you can't even touch your money until you're 59 and a half? You are young and a long, fruitful life ahead of you. What if you knew there's another way? Those are things that may feel like it's out of reach for most people, but I feel like it's my duty to let them know it is right here, right here for the taking. And you'd be surprised. Half the stuff we do don't even cost you a dime more than you're already spending Your retirement solutions are free. Why wouldn't you want to know about it? I just, I don't know. My why is empowerment. And if I've become this empowered and this lifted up, God gave me the voice to hopefully speak to someone else on the other side that needs to hear, it's going to be all right. And that's what I do. I make it all right. It's not about being all right today. It's about all right when you just don't even fathom you need it. Thank so you. that's my that's my why. That's your why. Any other questions? No? Robert about fell out. Who 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 is it that <laughs> I reminded you of? And I'm like, you the the young yeah. kid buying the first home. <laughs> you about fell out your chair when I said it like it is. I'm sorry, but, but I get a little worked up. <laughs> but it's true. It, it's true. It's you know, like you said, you know, we we insure our cars, we insure our phones, we insure. But then it's like, when it comes to us, it's like, okay. And I have a high school classmate of mine. He's a um, agent with, um, um, he, he's an insurance agent. He had, mm-hmm. his, had his office for about 20 years. And every now and then he'll post on Facebook. He's like, what's with all of the GoFundMe? 
you know, that, that that can't be, that's not sound financial planning. And if something happens to you or, or something happens to a loved one. So, yeah, you kind of struck a nerve there. <laughs> a good one, though. Yeah. Well, you know, and I work with a lot of churches, too, because you know, it is a struggle. I'm, I'm, I'm on the finance committee. I'm on the mission committee. And you, when you see people pulled that they can't contribute because debt or they contribute less than they could or should, doesn't everybody win if we just simply share knowledge and we can fix it? Okay. So here I I share with y'all about me losing John and, you know, when you do lose someone, both names on a mortgage, guess what? He's not here to sign any more papers. So I had to be able to get the house refinanced in my name. That's exactly where the first step has to happen. Even though the deed, I know the house automatically went to me. There was no probate, but it still has to happen, people. So at the end of the day, out of that, here goes, okay, a 30-year mortgage. This was two years ago. My 30-year mortgage with my debt-free bank would be paid off in 8.8 years. How many thousands of dollars would my mortgage company get to keep? And if I threw extra payments at them, okay, I, I shave off seven years. I shaved off 22 flipping years. And here's the best part is that my money stays in my bank when I borrow it. You know what happens between now and the next 8.8 years? I'll give you a hint. My daughter's 14. Okay, so we have. Uh, yeah, high school, it's already running me ragged, but we've got senior pictures, we college. got prom, we got a car, we got college, we got a wedding, we got, you, you know what's ahead of me, I told you kids aren't cheap, yeah. boy, I wouldn't trade it for nothing, <laughs> I want to welcome that and not be dreading it, and that's what I get to do, so that's the other side of my why, right, mm-hmm. is I want people to to get to look forward to these events. And not dread it. I, do, I, I loved one of, I love Ruby to death. One of my ladies, she, she point blank, she said, she's one of those, I'm going to work till I'm six feet under. And she goes, is there any way you're going to help me to not have to work until this house is paid off? And I'm like, well, let's go through things. And when I showed her that her house would be paid off by the time she's 63, I said, you have a choice now. Do you wait till 65? Shoot, Social Security raised up to 67. It's up to you. But before, she'd be working in her 80s. That makes a difference. And now she can look forward to to retirement instead of thinking it's never going to happen. And that's including paying off those doctor student loans. <laughs> so you got student loans, you got medical bills. That's my other thing. People don't know. They don't realize like when you pass your student loans, it's going to the parents or it's going to your estate. It doesn't go six feet under with you. Mm-hmm. So remember that um, who's going to clean up your mess. So let's get them taken care of. So Ray, you asked me to share a couple like how can I steer people? I am like a traffic cop, right? right? So the first thing that I would say, I, um, one, we're always hiring. There's so many people that request. We we don't cold call. I'm not, I'm not going to call a single person that doesn't already ask for, Hey, can you help me? So the first thing I do like to share with people, I'm going to throw it in the, in the chat. How do you reach out to me? got my phone number it's got my website dig for yourself maybe you don't even want to talk to an agent you know what right there on my website you can even look for applying for your own flipping insurance okay here you go or you could say hmm let me learn more about that debt-free life Hmm, let me schedule some time with Dana um hey maybe you want a position see what it's like to work with us. We are, we are a company, Symmetry Financial Group. I have to tout for a moment. I told you this was God-led and the way it was brought to me. I was, I, I came from nonprofit. I was looking for a nonprofit that I wouldn't have to travel as much as I was. And I kept being told I was either overqualified or just not now. And it, and it led me to four months unemployed on my knees asking God why. And I said no to this at first. And it really was in the quiet, God whispered, go help. 
And I remember that because it wasn't, I, w- I was, I was sitting outside and I, I believe in signs. I really do. And, um, you know, ever since my dad had passed, um, this red Cardinal every day comes to see me. And so I'm sitting there talking to the Cardinal. Yes, I do talk to my signs. Um, and I was just like, what am I going to do? And I had heard go help. Who am I supposed to help bird? And, um, <laughs> Sean, my mentor, called me. He doesn't normally call the people that said no. This was God-led. And I shared with you, um, you know, with with John. With John passing, it was dragonflies. Dragonflies everywhere. But there's always been this hopeful what comes next. How many other people maybe got to work at home during COVID and you don't want to return to the office? Or maybe you lost your job and you're trying to find your way. Maybe something like this inspires you. But to know to go help didn't have to be nonprofit. Symmetry is all about giving back and doing more in the world. It's all about developing individuals as business owners to learn entrepreneurship. And then how do you pay that forward? That's pretty huge in a culture that just, to get to be a part of that. And so when you see my website link that I put there, it might be calling to you even part-time. If you could fit it in your schedule, would you want to do it? I don't know. Let's have a conversation. So it's, we're, we're brought into people's lives for a reason. So there's my website. Now, if you 100%, I already know I want to talk to you about this debt-free life. I want to learn more about this. I want to dig into my numbers. I actually have a link for this. It's just a consultation, so I know which direction. Is it is it retirement solutions? Is it annuities? Is it debt-free life? Is it, hey, I just need some insurance on mama because I know when something happens, I'm going to have the one. I'm going to be the one to cover anything. Direct calendar link is the second link. And it has a section for your notes. Anything helpful of what I need to know. So that. That way we don't play phone tag and you can look at your busy schedule, look at my busy schedule and we coordinate. I think they're the two main things that would be ideal to share with people. Okay. What are your thoughts? Well, I just posted everything on um, social media also. Um, Okay. And I have a whole team. We are across the entire nation. Um, even Puerto Rico and Hawaii. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, let us help. Yeah. Any other questions any of you have? Any tools I can impart? I think if you want to know, like, okay, is this why this insurance thing works? Or to understand the evolution of where annuities used to have a bad name, right? Let's face it. Or, you know, you talk to somebody back when it was variable annuities, you didn't have right. access to your money, and your money was going up and down. Like, of course, it got a bad name. There is a really good book called The Retirement Miracle is one way that you can just understand more about fixed indexing. Um, another one, Killing Sacred Cows, is another great book on just understanding um, financial gain and 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 understanding um you know cash flows and then of course the um what would the rockefellers do Mm -hmm. i don't know there's fun books if you like money matters type books okay well uh, dana i I do want to thank you is there any more questions anything like that all right, so let's do this. I I I do have one last question. This guy yes, brings me for a few minutes. Um, we talked about a lot, but I know that there's a lot of either grandparents or um, young people just got married and everything. They're just having babies and everything like that. Um, you don't have to really get into a lot of detail, but I know that um, you're able, um, or we're able to um, provide or or have some help them. What is the earliest age to start with a uh, a newborn or maybe one or two years what's the early stage after the first wellness check after the first wellness and check. They, they could be and it even says zero years old okay. <laughs> you gotta love that in illustration they're zero right, right, right yeah right, right. um you know you you can't do anything before birth 
but after the first well check, you're allowed to to start working on things with that. And, you know, and I see that a lot. Think about this. How many grandparents, you know, this is very common. It was, you know, even back when we were growing up that, you know, once a year, maybe you got that CD that grandma and grandpa got you, or you got that check that went into that special account. And that savings account used to be a big deal to take that savings book. (laughs) Um, Doesn't do like what we thought it used to. But it's, it's really interesting how much it's the little things that they do on a routine basis like that. Change your mindset a little bit to say, okay, I know what they're trying to do is create a legacy. You can actually do that, right. you know, or it doesn't, you don't have to break the bank to start a legacy. And I'm going to tell you this, in the insurance, you're always going to get more per dollar, always. So why not turn your, maximize on that for yourself, okay. for your child. All right. Well, uh, again, Dana, Dana, I want to thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the information of the, these, these guys have and those that are listening. Again, you've been listening to When Christian Speed Talk Radio. Today's broadcast is uh, the singles ministry. You know, his, 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 give her to say the wrong name. Megan, where you at? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, uh, Madison the Heart Singles Ministry. Uh, do I'm not me. sleeping. I'm just. I am tired. I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay, I understand. I'm just messing with you. Um, I want to thank um, Robert and uh, of course Maggie and um, Hope for joining us. Uh, I, I, and for the rest of those that are listening, thank you for joining in the, in the um, different social media plats. Well, again, Dana, I really appreciate this. This cannot be your last time because I know you got this much more we could probably do. And if they, but you have Dana's um, contact information. It's always it's on the flyer and also on the in the uh, Facebook uh, chat and everything like that. Uh, let me do this real quick, okay? Yeah. Right. I, I, appreciate I put all again. the information in the chat. Oh, did you? Okay. Yes. All right. So her website is uh, SFG else, mm-hmm. For those that are listed on the broadcast, it's S FGLSAgency.com. You can go, you can find out, you can even do a um, uh, um, assurance right there on the on the on the on the page and everything like that it has a lot more information on it too. So go ahead, Dana. I want to share one more thing. This is okay. true, 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 true. It's called. So first of all, I'm really big on. There's an opportunity to to give back, get some. Uh, this is apps. I can't believe I totally didn't think about it right off the bat. So we have a program called Myquility, completely mm-hmm. free. And yet it saves you money in your travel. It saves you money uh, with your with your prescriptions. I mean, we even had I had a client that's a diabetic that was having to pay dag on near a hundred dollars a month in their their metformin, and yet they can get it through Quility RX for four dollars. When we can save people money just by having connectivity, I'm not here to be a travel agent or anything like that. But to know that, look, this this particular, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send. It's got even you know me MD. Some people can't afford healthcare. This is not mainstay healthcare, but it gives you your own primary care doctor to have on the same calls or to get scripts for going to get your things. I just wanted to share that information. Uh, I'm going to copy this link and put it in the chat because I I do think that, hey, if you you don't know what you don't know, it's again, zero cost to anything. It just drives you to it. What I love about it, now I'll give you a brief, I think why people might want to know about it. We all go and use travel sites, right? Like the Expedia, Orbitz, whatever. So whenever you're like, oh, I get a cheaper price on Priceline or this other site, they have an overhead that they still get to keep. My Quility, what we do is we bring you direct with the linkage. And if there's any extra, it's actually given back to you as the client and that's pretty cool that's remarkable when you're going in your booking and you're like huh i'm gonna get cash back for that Mm -hmm. so what a great way to even save on you know travel or i mean i know i'm not doing it justice and how it makes a difference but especially when you look at you know whether the the younger or the elder either way the healthcare side 
it's expensive. Why not being able to at least know where are some ways that you can save money and um, that way you can live life to the fullest for less. And that's exactly what it's about. All right. I didn't want to lose that opportunity. Get it no, out no, there no. to all your <laughs> listeners. Oh, all right. So Meg, you're going to share that in uh, Facebook too. Thank you. All right. So Dana, again, I want to thank you. No last comments. We're, we're set. Everybody's good. Mm-hmm. Maggie, Hope. And uh, okay. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I look forward uh, to meeting many of you. I'm sorry. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> oh, well, we're going to ask you to close this out in prayer if you don't mind. Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we ask? I'm so tired. Okay. Well, I don't even know if I can formulate the word. It's a okay. Okay. Not a problem. Not a problem. No, it's okay. And you ask no, me, no, no, I'm going to no, be no, obedient. No, no, no. I'm no, going to be it's okay. Father, it's okay. now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for Dana on tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we are able to learn what it is to be have financial liter- financial freedom. Father, we bless you and we praise you for every hearer, Lord God. Lord, that they will reach out and want to know how can they have that financial freedom in their lives, that they can become debt-free, Father. Father, we bless you and we praise you now for what you're about to do. Because even in this, Lord God, even what we learned on tonight, Father, will open up doors that we can uh, that is unimaginable for financial freedom, that we'll be able to take those vacations and pay off those mortgages and those in our vehicles, Father, and to be able to send our children to college, Father, that they choose, Lord God. Father, we thank you and we bless you for opening the doors. We thank you and we bless you for Dana. We ask that you bless her, Lord God, for the time that she has spent with sharing with us on tonight. Lord God, bless her burns, Lord God. Lord, let them overflow in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father, we thank you and we honor you even for her staff, Lord God, that was logged in on tonight and that was a support, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for every hero. We thank you, Lord God, for Robin, for Ray, for um, Hope, Lord God, even for Renee and, and Felicia, who was missing on tonight. Father, we ask that you bless them, keep them, cover us with your blood, Lord God. Lord God, until the appointed time that you will have us to meet once again, Lord God, to go into another session of our Matters of the Heart singles ministry. We praise you and we give you thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining in. Thank we you again. Join. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. So I'm going to hit stop recording, of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, guys, oh, that's I... right. I am the host. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to end the meeting for everybody. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> See, funny. You I he has to make it. you the host again. Uh-huh. All right, let me uh, let me make. That's so funny. I'm the host and the co-host. Eh, there you go. Okay, there you go, go, Ray. You're now the host. Uh, it is Ray. Okay. I'm supposed to make the host, right? Yes. <laughs> now you can hang up on everybody. <laughs> yeah, I can hang up on everybody. Thanks again, Jim. y'all. Everybody. I appreciate the opportunity and and. Uh, Especially you perked up, Robert. If you got that rollover, how do you get in the green line? You give me a call. I'll talk to you um, later. Stop the recording, Ray. You did. Yeah? It still says recording. <laughs>